Hello everyone and welcome to series 2 of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and friends, you know. Um, so the first series was all about getting to space and okay we overran a little bit on that because we got to space and then carried on playing a little, for a little bit longer while I built up the productivity, utility and optimization science packs and then we decided that was a good place to draw the line. So there are a couple of reasons for that. One of them, the um, the, sort of the, the somewhat out of universe reason was because I, I knew I was going to be taking a week off and so I felt it made sense to have the gap sort of on the border between the two um, different series. Um, um, the other thing was we just sort of got carried a little bit carried away and hadn't really thought about when we were going to stop. Um, and then the uh, and the sort of the, the slight um, excuse around that is that uh, w what I'm going to claim is was the, was the intention was that these two are, um, sciences are required for picking up a lot of the things that you tend to think of as pre-space sciences because in 0.6 you need all of these utility sciences for things like uh, logistics stuff and uh, what's this this is a oh, logistic warehouses sure um, and lots of all and, and getting in coal liquefaction and all, all, all those other things that you know you used to get before you took off from space so what we're actually calling it is we're saying that um, series one was basically getting to the end of the basic sciences before you start on the tiers that require all of the exotic materials so that's my excuse, I'm definitely sticking to that, and um, yes, so this is now Series 2. And in Series 2 we're going to start working through some of the tiered sciences, so over here my, my, my big push for the last, or for the first uh, stream of, of, episode of Series 2 was to start working towards making the first level of energy science. And that's because our first priority is going to be to getting space trains up and running. And space trains are great um, because they allow you to have trains in space. And trains are great, so you know you can see how that would work together. So space railway, um, you need to get uh, we need to get the um, the what was it called the energy science pack one. So that's why I've been working on that because this is a high priority for us. And what, what our plans with this aren't to just go in and go yeah okay now we've got trains sure now what. We have a bit more of an idea than that. So at the moment, everything I've built up along here has been pretty much a sort of... It's it's sort of a cross between a starter base and a mall. So a lot of the things we've built along here are going to be moved off elsewhere, I think, once we get the space trains running up and running. Certainly this bit here will all be moved off somewhere else, so we can have a single area somewhere else that is doing all, all of the energy science. We don't want to build it all up here. This is going to be a horrible, horrible mess if we do. We're also going to move off some of the other things, like producing the um, the coolant. So down here, the, the, these um, the the chilling will be done probably on site for each thing that requires it. But generating the thermofluid and probably generating the orange goo as well will be done somewhere else because those are going to be needed by lots and lots of places. We're also going to make some improvements to how we drop stuff off, although probably not straight away. We shall see how that goes. Um, and in the yeah, and in the few, and we'll see how it goes from there. But the first step is going to be to to get uh, space trains. The second step is going to be to sort of to reorganise this so that it makes a bit more sense and to get it onto a, onto a sort of a train system so so that everything works as it should. So yes, the um, building up the um, the the uh, energy science well. In theory, it was reasonably straightforward. Uh, it required quite a lot of stuff to be built along here, so we, we, I, I needed to start making the electromagnetic facilities, the particle accelerators. Already had computers, um, but there were quite a few buildings that I've, I've now added on up here. So as you can see, we've added in the... Um, uh, so we already had the plasma generators, but I've put in hypercoolers because we needed cooler thermofluid. I've added in radiation machines, added in laser machines, and EM facilities, as I was saying, particle accelerators, and these things, which I've forgotten the name of. These are uh, research servers. Because it turns out in... I don't know if it's 0.6 or Crastorio 2, let's find out. Um, in Crastorio 2, you need to use these machines in order to do science related generation of stuff so in um in in in, in uh, sp straight up space exploration you, you yeah you use the supercomputers to make the um uh, to make the in insights and the significant data yes but then you use a space manufacturing one of these things in order to make the um the actual science packs and i think I think you use a computer to make these catalogs? Yes, yes, it's a computer for the catalogs and an, and an assembly machine for the science packs. Now, both of those have been moved off into these alternative buildings, which was a bit of a surprise, um, but not, not an actual problem. The only slight difficulty with these things is that because they're so small, it's a bit difficult to get all of the inputs and outputs in around them as I would normally want to. And I'm not well, I'm going to have to redo this differently when I build it up on a larger scale. But at the moment, as I said, this is just a sort of a just to get us kick started. So over here, we are bringing in the stuff that was needed for well, some of the stuff that's needed for the um, uh, what are you lightning research conductivity data. So we've got um, absolutely nothing coming in apparently. Uh, that's weird. Apparently, I didn't finish this one off. 
Um, so this stuff must have come from me just emptying my inventory. Uh, this was less done than I was expecting. So uh, basically, I'm going to need to put that there, that there, and that'll bring that that one up. There should be copper up here as well. That's down here. I've, I've been really badly at, you know, actually finishing things off. So put those in like that. Uh, that'll flow those ingredients up there. Now, the other pro the problem is that we don't have any holmium coming in yet. That's something that Tristan's working on, and I shall talk about that in a moment. But at the moment, for now, we don't have any of that available. So, um, yeah, not going not gonna to be doing any, anything anything with that yet. Um, but once it is, is supplied, that will be coming along this belt down here. And this one I have actually put in the other belts for. Well done there. So so that'll come up here. It'll be chopped up into uh, into plates here, passed around here, and we'll be able to make it into the into the science this way. Um, we do also have another belt coming along here to provide the whole medium anywhere else it might be needed. So that one's a bit disappointing because whilst I've put everything together, it's not quite running yet. The next one along, though, the magnetism, uh, electromagnetic field data. This one, I was able to get everything we needed. So we needed the blue clouds, data cards, rare metals, and uh, thermofluids. Great. Uh, all of this is stuff we have. So I've, I've, I've started chilling uh, or super chilling the thermofluid over here. No. Here. Uh, in order to take the cold stuff in and give out very, sorry, cool stuff and give out cold and warm. Uh, is that right? Yes. Cold, yeah, cool in, warm, cold out, and also warm out because it's um, it's it's a heat pump basically, I guess. So you need to output some hot as well as some cold. Uh, so that's that's yeah, brought over here, fine, fed in, in in all the normal ways. There's quite a lot of pipe spaghetti going along along going on along here in order to try and get everything into place, but it basically works. And then over here on the other side, you can see we've got the memory cards and the uh, raw rare metals bit. Sorry, no, the cooked rare metals, the rare metal ingots being passed in. I've got to stop calling those raw rare metals. It panics everybody when I get it wrong and they think I'm feeding the wrong thing into the machines. Um, but yes, that's how that works. And that's going into both of these machines because this one also requires rare metals and plasma stream. Uh, plasma is coming from the plasma generators I put in over here, which probably means I'm going to need a lot more of these at some point. But for now, it's, it's, it's coping okay. So yes, we're making ion stream here. And this could potentially be useful for fueling the spaceship as well, come to think of it. So we'll be feeding that in in over here, um, and that, as you can see, is making the science data. Now, this does produce uh, scrap data cards as well, or junk data cards as well, so there's a chance of this this failing. This one also produces scrap. So we've got, out here, we've got, ooh, no, we haven't got this properly done. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need another scrap output as well, so that's um, something I'm glad, I'm glad I've noticed, because this is going to produce scrap, which I haven't dealt with. I am dealing with the junk data cards. Those are being fed onto this belt that goes along here to allow them to be reformatted all the way down here. But I haven't dealt with the, uh, the the scrap that's going to come out, so I'm going to need to put another splitter on here to get the scrap out and dump it onto the scrap belt down here, or perhaps onto a, another scrap belt. There's, well, there's one over here as well. No, I think it'll be easier to go straight down. It's a good thing all of this is temporary because I didn't really think it through very well. <laughs> But yes, that is producing the electromagnetic data. The junk data cards are going out this way and the data cards are going out this way. Great. In a vague attempt to minimise the amount of the data cards that I've got just buffered on belts, I put the um, the science actual science production in the middle here. So we've got the data cards coming along this way and then data, the other two data cards are coming from the other side. So over here we have radiation data, takes some blank data cards and uranium-235, outputs radiation data and uh, and a little and and a 50% chance of some uranium-235. And so that gets passed, they, those both get passed round down here. This time I did take everything into consideration and over here we can see that we're making um, all of, oh dear, we've, we've, we've uh, got stuck on uh, on cool thermofluid. I'm going to need to fix that by putting some more tanks in. Um, so yes, over here we're taking in the mir mirrors and data cards and thermofluid and producing the polarization data in a laser facility. And so that should just pour down here. The idea is the scrap goes down this way, the junk data cards go down here and the uh, uranium comes out here to be passed around and prioritized to get back in on, over here. Now, the uranium does come in on the opposite side of the belt from where it's being fed in off this belt, which isn't a problem because um, when it comes through here, it'll be prioritised because it'll be coming in on the left-hand side at the bottom here, so that means it'll get used up first. So that is actually okay, despite being a little bit weird, um, but that's, that, that'll be fine. Um, and then over here, we're producing mirrors, which is it's, it's a load of input stuff. So we've got we've, um, but all of this is stuff I already had. It was just so it was just a case of bringing it along here and then pulling it off the bus. So it was actually quite easy. Um, I say that it took me the whole evening to uh, to, to get up to this level of bit of producing science, but um, you know it it, it it went okay. It was just a bit time consuming. So this is producing uh, 
mirrors and scrap. The, the scrap gets disposed of. The mirrors get used up here. We're going to need lots of mirrors for other things in the future, but I think that's going to be another thing that we're going to move off to its own um, production facility area um, because it has quite a lot of inputs and it's used in quite a few different places. Off the top of my head, it's definitely used for this. It's used for making solar panels and I think it's used in other places as well. I, I want to say it's certainly... Oh, it's used for making telescopes. I don't think it's used for making the, um, the plates for the telescopes, although I'm not certain about that. We'll find out about that later. So yes, the four cards then get brought in over here, and this is this is very very similar to the way it worked in uh, in 0.5, except that the machines are slightly different. In that you make the uh, catalogs in here out of the four different types of cards. The card the the catalogs can then be made into insights, and then insights and, and also insights and oh no insights then get turned into significant data. Um, so we've got an output here that will pass them around to here to be taken in there, and also this this inserter is passing them straight into here. And then over here you turn the significant data, the catalogs, and the insights into into the actual science packs. So you've got quite a lot of different things coming together here. Um, in that you need you need this one to make this one, you need this one to make this one, and you then need all three of them to make the actual science packs. And then down here, and I've done this again, I've uh, not dealt with all of the extra outputs that are coming out from here, specifically these uh, junk data cards. But actually they're just going to need to be dumped, dropped onto here. So that's not too bad, it's just going to be a case of putting in a splitter here and setting up a filter on it. Uh, so that's kind of okay, but still annoying that I, that I, that I forgot about it. Um, this whole area, as I say, is going to be very temporary so I don't feel bad about sort of making slightly untidy fixes like this and the whole thing is just a bit crap but the idea is that this will then allow us to build up as I say build up the space trains once we've got those going everything will be hunky dory and we'll be able to start building things properly and doing it a bit in a somewhat nicer way so yes this should all now once we get the whole meme in this should start working. We've got three of the science data cards coming through here, although one of them has stopped a bit because something jammed up here. Oh yeah, it was the um, yes, this, this cool thermofluid. It was a cold thermofluid rather. Um, so we need an uh, we need an um, an overflow protection about for this somewhere. Hang on, wait, what? No, it was the cool. This this output stuff. This is the one that. Uh, I'm very confused. So it was you 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 backed up. You've got too much uh, cool cool thermofluid on the output. Have I just not piped it in properly? No, there's a pipe missing there. Oh, for goodness sake, Lawrence. There we go. I spent all evening on this, and it still doesn't bloody work. Alright, so <laughs> that's actually better than I thought, because I, th I thought what had happened was the uh, traditional thing where your um, overflow tank back up here fills up completely, and you don't have anywhere to, anywhere to um, and, and, and you're not using it up quickly enough to make it into the really cold stuff over here. Um, so you need, I, I would need to put in more tanks here. It turns out that's not the case, it's just that I've forgotten a piece of piping, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, so once that gets put in, which it hasn't hasn't yet, that will then start to that, that will then get rid of the uh, thermofluid. Boop, there we go. And then this this whole machine this machine starts running, and you can see stuff being put into it. The machine is running. We'll get those data cards through. So yes, there's a few things I'm going to need to fix at the beginning of the next session. But after that, I have a cunning plan for my uh, next project, which is going to be to take this spaceship here that I found conveniently in, in an asteroid belt, and actually take it back to the asteroid belt I found it in. Because over in um, Kalidas Asteroid Belt 1, there are some massive patches of beryllium. Uh, so if we t take a look at this one, this is 108 million of it here. There's another 13 million over there. That's not quite so exciting. Um, there's copper and there's rare metals and there's barrel more barrel over here, more over here, and there's loads of copper over here. So I think what I'm probably going to do is come out here with it with the spaceship and start mining up the barrel and I'll probably put in a barrel processing facility here just and, and to get to the point where I can then load the spaceship up with barrel ingots that I can then fly back to the uh, space station and then once we've got the rail system up and running that will allow me to then establish a, um, a, a start doing astronomic science and that I kind of fancy doing the astronomic science because you kind of need that you, I, I want to get spaceships at some point it's not high on the priority list I'm doing things a little bit out of order here but I kind of want to go off and do that and since I'm in space and have the spaceship and so on it seemed to make sense for me to do that hopefully we'll get other people to go off and do some of the other materials we need and speaking of which we've uh, looked at a few new planets and we found the planet of Njord and Njord is a, is a Holmanite planet and so this is the one that's going to be relevant for the energy science so Tristan has been out on Njord and he's been doing uh, doing get he's been getting things up and running um, it's so far it's, it's not done a huge amount we're doing this fairly standard um, 
setup that we do normally do on these planets, where we go out, we put down a massive quantity of power generation using the uh, using the um, the system that just turns water into power, because there's plenty of water on this planet. In fact, there's a lot more water than we would like on this planet. It's a really really swampy planet, and those are a pain to work on. So I've recommended to Tristan that he puts a bit of um, he, he brings out some um, landfill with him just to make just to make sure. So so far he's he spent well I won't say he spent the whole stream getting this set up because that would be that would be inaccurate but this is as far as he's got with the uh, Njord so far um, he's got some landing pads here so he's got some stuff coming in he's got quite a lot of rail he's got a load of belts all the other uh, some of the bits and pieces that are going to be needed to get to get systems up and running over here and so he's going to do essentially what we did on Tyshkuten and Drakit but this is a much larger planet so instead of having about twelve um, core mine seams that he can go out and play with he's got. I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot, quite a lot of them. So he's going to go out and put put in drills on at least lots of these, uh, whether it's all of them or half of them or maybe a dozen of them to get a decent rate flowing. Uh, I, I don't know yet. But the, interesting, the useful thing is that because it's a much, much bigger planet, each one of these seams is going to output quite a lot more the, of, of the um, of the uh, core chunks than we, than we were seeing on uh, Drakit or Taishakuten. And that means when he goes in and then sets up the normal system for processing core chunks into... Well, processing holmium core chunks into holmium ore, whatever it's called at this stage, and all, and then normal core chunks that can then be turned into delivery cannon capsules, he's going to get, from the number of these he puts down, he's going to get a lot more delivery cannons firing, and a lot, or a lot more delivery cannon capsules being made per hour than we are on Drakit or Taishikuten. So we should get a good free, a good spray of, um, of uh, holmium coming out from here, or at least the, we have the potential for it. Happily, there's also a few patches of oil out here. 8 million there, 8 million there, 7 million there. So we're looking at about uh, 24 million in, in, this, in this sort of area which is all very very close and convenient and that's necessary because as we've discussed beforehand the um the the delivery cannon capsule production system also needs an input of oil as well as the core fragments which is a bit of a shame um or uh, but never mind we're gonna have to we're gonna have to deal with that anyway so he but he's got the oil down here to, to allow, allow him to do that and he's got a reasonable amount of dry land here to build up the um the the holmium processing in as well uh, but running railways through areas like this is going to be a little bit tricky because as I said it's a really really swampy planet in places um, so you've got all of these little patches of water that just get in the way um, so yes he's, he's going to take out a load of uh, land landfill to make that a bit easier Currently, most of his production is, as I said, is building up the power and thinking about what's going to be needed so he knows what to put in the rockets. If we have a look down on um, on Norvis, we should probably find, we'll probably find uh, the down in the rocket area down here, presumably. Uh, yeah, here we go, Njord. So there's a rocket here, and it's got loads of stuff in it. So yeah, this is um, this is basically what he's decided he's going to need to get things up and running. There's a, a load of steam turbines will be for the umbrella def to power the umbrella defence. Lots of pulverizers, lots of furnaces. I don't know how carefully he's thought about this. Whether he's designed any uh, blueprints or anything, or whether he's just gone, well, I'm going to need a load of all of this stuff. Let's just pull it all in. Um, but he's, he's working in the right direction. And if we have a look at the holmium. Holmium. So we, he's going to be digging up these these core, core frag holmenite core fragments. Those are going to then be uh, smashed up into to produce holmenite itself, uh, which we're not going to deliver a cannon. It's going to be crushed into crushed holmium holmenite. Um, for now, yep, crushed into made into crushed holmenite, which you then oh you then need the anion exchange beads, which are made from. Uh, could I say stop telling me about delivery cannon methods of getting things? Which are then going to be made. Uh, so. Hmm. There's quite a lot goes on in here, so he's going to be needing to bring in cryonite and steam and nitric acid. So that's going to be that's going to be fun. He's got quite a lot of quite got quite a complex process to work through here. So uh, just to make the anion exchange exchange beads in the first place. Although I think you don't get through those particularly quickly, as far as I remember. Um, right. So where was I? I was with the uh, the crushed crushed hol crushed holmenite. So that one, you you yes, you mix up you mix in the uh, the hydrogen. Apparently you need hydrogen chloride as well. Um, okay, so hydrogen chloride and the exchange beads. The exchange beads do get used up some of the time. But you get this big sort of thing where it passes around. Sometimes you get the crushed holmenite back. Sometimes you get holmium chloride out instead. So presumably we then take the holmium chloride um, and then we can make it into... Interesting, you use copper cable to make it into holmium powder. That's a weird one. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to work from a science point of view, but sure. Um, which you can then cook with. Or you can you can then either use sand, coal and sand and holmium powder to make the ingots, or you can then or you can use pyroflux, which is going to have quite a bit of because of the core fragment processing. So okay, hopefully we'll be able, there'll be enough of that to use that. And that makes the molten holmium, which finally 
uh, we can make it with with oh with extra sand as well. You can then make it to whole new ingots. So hopefully there'll be enough stone being output by this. If not, he's going to need to find a lot a good supply of stone on that planet. Now some will come out of the core mine processing, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. So this will be quite an interesting one to see see this come together because there's a lot of different things required to go into the into the holmium processing in order to actually get it to to behave itself and become what, what we want it to. And I don't see very much in the way of stone. There's 200,000 stone there, which is almost nothing. This seems to be a fairly stone-free planet. Um, and there aren't, I don't think there are even particularly large, there's, there's a few of these boulders around, but that doesn't really help very much. So it's, it's, that's very much a short-term thing. So hopefully there's going to be enough whole, there's going to be enough stone coming out of the, um, out, out of the processing in general and out of the core processing especially, in the tilt that will have enough for that. So the other question is, when I go out to Kalidas Asteroid Belt um, 1 and I start digging up this barrel, what's the barrel processing like? Am I going to find that actually this is unrealistic to do out here? So we're going to have barrel being dug up, which you mix with sulfuric acids to make barrels, beryllium sulfate. So I'm going to sh need to ship out sulfur and, um, and iron to get this. Um, that's going to be a pain. Bar and, and, and then cryonite and water. So I can ship out ice as well. Jeez. Um... Uh, but they give some of the water back, but I think I reckon, I, I looked at this earlier and it's, it turns out it doesn't give up back very much of the water, it's like a quarter of it. Um, and then this, again, yeah, what do we have here? We have, okay, you can use pyroflux or you can use coal and sand. So, yeah, there's a lot of processing for beryllium and to do all of that with stuff shipped in by delivery cannon seems like a faff. Maybe I should be shipping the ber beryllium ore back to um, Norvis orbit to, to, to process it. Or perhaps sending it, I should be sending it to a planet where it can be um, processed a bit more effectively um, through uh, with, with productivity modules in there as well. I don't know, because the thing is though, if you ship it as ingots, you get a lot more per stack um, than you do if you ship it as the ore. Because when as, as you process stuff, it always gets smaller and denser. So you, um, in the extreme cases, you've got things like the Naquium from uh, 0.5, where it takes something like 40 stacks of the ore to make one stack of the, um, of the ingots. This one, it's probably not going to be quite as many of that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was 10 to 1. Uh, I'm not going to go through the maths right now. So, yeah, there's lots and lots of uh, things to think about with processing these resources and deciding whether it actually is worth doing them all uh, out on the uh, out in, in, in uh, remote places in space. But uh, we shall see how that goes. Um, there's lots to get on with there. And hopefully next time, Tristan will, will have time to get at least a little bit of Holmium flowing. Um, even if he doesn't get it running up at full speed, if he can get a little bit dribbling through so we can test through the, uh, the science systems and start, making, and start doing research back over here on... Um, uh, where, wherever I am in orbit, that'd be, that'd be rather nice, just to get this, this thing up and running and, and, and do some science with that. So, uh, that's I think, is um, all, I'm going to, all, all I've got to talk about today. It's been quite a short episode, actually, but I think that's because I spent a long time putting this together, um, and so I, um, it sort of limits how much other stuff there is for me to talk about, because I can, I can gloss over this relatively quickly compared to the amount of time it took to build it. Um, and then we've got, and, and so it's just talking about plans for the future. So, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Please check out the sponsor, treefall.be. Use the code LawrencePlays on checkout to get 20% off your first month of, of server hosting uh, for various games. And also, yes, come back uh, tomorrow when uh, I should be talking about what's been going on down on Norvis. So, today's episode has been basically what's been going on on the remote planets or in space, that sort of thing. Places off planet. Um, and, and tomorrow I shall talk about what's been going on down on Norvis. Uh, Monday we'll be playing uh, another, and we'll, we'll be streaming our next session of this. Where hopefully, as I say, we'll get this one going. I'll be heading out and thinking about making beryllium and pounding my head against a brick wall because it's going to be difficult. Um, and there'll be uh, lots more going on down on Norvis as well, of course. And we'll uh, we'll see how that goes, gets on, and we'll see what might happen there tomorrow. Sunday will be a Dyson Sphere program update video, and on Wednesday there'll be a Dyson Sphere program stream uh, where I should probably be getting quite close to finishing actually because I'm uh, I'm most of the way there at the moment. So, as always, thank you for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel because it does make a big difference to have uh, more people subscribed. It massively boosts the, uh, it, it boosts how well YouTube promotes my videos, basically. So I'd, I would uh, really appreciate your help there. Thank you for watching, and as ever, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.